So, great that you already are here at the end of the conference. So welcome to our little session about our daily life and work um, and the challenges we face together. And yeah, it, I'm just, yeah, it works. Oh God, yes, I'm really happy. So this is our, our topic, but basically, yeah, we're talking about how, how we survive our daily work life and how we manage this together. And let me give you a quick overview what we're going to talk about. It's basically what we do and who we are, how we actually started to work together and our application, how we manage development teams, our workflows, stakeholder alignment and quality assurance and a little bit of wrap up and questions at the end, of course. So let's start. Who we are and what we do. Can you all guess what kind of job we have <laughs> with seeing this picture? It's like having a lot of arms, a lot of, um, yeah, our hands everywhere, movements, right? So let me tell you a little bit about myself. So I'm Kerstin, I'm a project manager and I work for Transcomi. And my role is to connect the business side and uh, our stakeholders and all their requirements um, and OneX Internet, the agency we're working with. And yeah, together we build like, or we, we built already like a very nice distribution. And before we start diving deep in, let me tell you a little bit about Transcomi, as this is also important. So the Transcomi group is uh, Europe's second largest um, cash and carry uh, supplier business. We have like uh, three, 31,000 employees around and 2.7 million customers. Our, our, the headquarter is based in Basel and we belong to the co-op group that is based in Switzerland. So this is basically my company. And now I'm switching over to my partner in crime, Kari. <laughs> also welcome from my side. Hi, I'm Karen. I'm project manager at OneX Internet. Um, yeah, what I'm doing. I'm taking responsibility uh, for planning, for coordinating, for communi communicating, connecting, like all this together, doing day by day and uh, these kinds of the value I'm doing every day. Um, what is Phonix Internet? I guess everyone maybe knows already because we have also a booth downstairs and um, yeah. You might have seen, um, we are an international team. Um, we have 58 employers and also headquarters in Frankfurt, Berlin, Reykjavik and uh, Konil. Um, but if you would like to hear more about the company, feel free to come again and uh, we can connect. So how it started, Phonix Internet and Transcomi. Okay, so Transcomi and uh, OneX Internet met first in 2018 and uh, our requirements were back then that we had different CMS systems with different teams who were managing all over the company and it was like a little mess. So we tried to um, find a way to unify all websites that we have um, in a different way and also have a new design and something that is sustainable for all of our brands. Um, and some also that it fits our B2B customers. So in the end, we decided to build um, a Drupal distribution and that's what we did then. Yeah, so we built a solution. So <laughs> we standardized um, the, all websites. Uh, we started of course with one, but um, we are growing now um, to 19 websites. 19 websites are live right now. In the last uh, months, we went live with Zelkos Romania and Zelkos Poland. Um, yeah, also we have like a new design with customizable front end and different for the different brands. Um, yeah, also the solution was like to have a smooth interaction with the customer and to be more focused for the project than like acting in background so many times um, for the POs. Um, sorry. Yeah. 
All right, just to give you some numbers, what we had like done in 2023 already. So just imagine we have, um, yeah, 5,417 work hours. This contains like only the maintenance projects. Um, of course, also with tracking and everything what belongs to. Um, then we have, for my person, I had like more or less 80, 1898 uh, meeting hours. It's me, of course. <laughs> Um, <laughs> then the 19 websites, what we already said, um, 480 issues, features and flaws, which we cr first created in GitLab um, and then switched to Azure. So this was also a transition this year um, in, the mid, like in March, I guess, yeah. um, where we um, had a transition from GitLab to Azure. So um, yeah, more or less, Five project teams uh, are currently working on the project. That's called Distro, Apollo, Kronos, App and Product. But more and deeper uh, to that I will tell you later. Um, currently we are working with 60 people in, on the project and with eight different nationalities. Yes, let's talk. Let's talk about our Drupal application. So here you can see basically the, the base of all of our uh, websites. Um, well, below our distribution, there's the RIP, the integration with e-commerce tools and our API client, of course. And then we built in the last years two design systems, one for the red websites and one for the blue websites. You will see soon uh, why I call it like this. And each of these websites has a shop integration. And uh, all our websites are hosted also on Pantheon. And now I want to give you a quick demo. And I hope this will work with our tabs. So <laughs> so, yes. Yes. so, thank you, Karin. Always rescuing me. <laughs> Is this working? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So here you can see um, the Transcome website and its, uh, its form in a not locked in um, state. So when you click on the right, right top and um, a window will open, a JavaScript window. I don't know if you're able to click yeah. in the next. It would be Just awesome. want to share, uh, to have a quick I'm look on the front, front end side. <laughs> So, how difficult? Do I have some sign in? Yes, first in the sign in. So, this is a JavaScript layer that will open when uh, you try to log in. And then, next one would be great if you click that we see already the logged in version. No, it's not working. Sorry. Maybe try to log in. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to. <laughs> Where's my mouse? It's there. Oh. Wow. <laughs> like this. In German, we call it the Vorführeffekt. effect. I don't know how to <laughs> translate it into English, but. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, yeah, I know. Of course you do. Ah, <laughs> what's <laughs> this? I mean, we can also skip it and go to the oh. to the next uh, slide. <laughs> Okay, that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> we managed to log in. <laughs> okay. 
now you have another button to click, otherwise uh, the audience will just see. <laughs> it's like the date you can select before you actually change to the shop and see all the products. So this is now <laughs> finally uh, the shop. For the user, it doesn't make any difference, but behind all of this, um, another agency uh, for you and your customer is developing uh, our shops, but for the end user, it's not visible at all. And also we have a functionality in the menu that each time you can like select in the CMS if you want to have a, a menu item displayed or not. So this is actually very, very useful and can be easily managed by any content editor. And also the search, when you search directly now logged in in the shop, you get both contents like uh, products that are fitting your search or other um, yeah, content that is uh, regarding to your search. So what Kerstin uh, mentioned already, um, before had we, when we were not logged in, you can't see the sortiment. So when you go to log in, then you, it's only like the sortiment gets displayed. Also with some other um, um, menu points here as goodbye and season marking shops. So there are possibilities to like display or like um, not display. Um, um, maybe shortly the search. Fingers crossed yeah. that it's working. Yeah. <laughs> what we learn from this, maybe not live demos. <laughs> But basically also what we want to show here, the search, um, you can display also the content from the website and um, the sortiment is displayed. Yes. Great. Okay. Frische Paradies? Yeah, let's switch to um, another website, to Frische Paradies. So this was the red one, yes. now comes the blue, <laughs> the blue one. one. <laughs> We have the same system here, the same shop integration, just with another design system. And uh, yeah, it's working basically the same. The difference here is that the menu is a little bit um, more, let's say, designy. <laughs> so when you hover over uh, Angebote, please, if you, if you are able to. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you see a menu which is a little bit more artsy and uh, easy for the user. So you see some differences between the classic Transgourmet design system and a little bit more playful Frische Paradies design system here. And also in the shop. Um, Let's see if this is working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the same. Also a JavaScript layer that comes and then <laughs> hopefully Magic. the shop also appears. <laughs> Getting better. Yeah, I see that. Ah. You learn fast as <laughs> usual. <laughs> All right. Okay, great. Yeah, so now you can see the full potential. And Karin, when you could click on the first menu item, would be great. A little bit down, yeah. <laughs> so here you can see the shop with a header and all the products that are um, sorted in the category of fish. Okay, cool. I think and the same behavior as I showed you uh, with the search also for Frische Paradies that you have the content from the website and also uh, the products from the shop. Yes. Okay, then let's continue back to, back to presentation. the presentation. <laughs> uh, yeah. Perfect. All right. So our next slide is a little bit of an overview what is happening uh, like on our shops. So the unique monthly visitors uh, are around uh, 250,000, which is not that much if you may think, but it's just for collected for our B2B business. So and our shops are generating an annual revenue around 1 billion. So that you also have an overview about what is happening on our side. 
Great, and for that, we switch to the next topic. Yep, which will be about our development teams. And you can probably relate to all of that. <laughs> but um, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. not a topic <laughs> what we would like to talk about. What we would like to talk about is the overview, to give you an overview about the project structure. Maybe I would take that. Yes, <laughs> sure. Um, all right, so on top you see um, Transformé Group. So this is the client. Um, also you see uh, Zekros, Transformé, Frosche Paradis and Nigemann. Um, these are the POs, so the brands of Transgourmet Group. So um, it's only displayed here four of them, but these not all. So guess had something, someone a number of brands in your head? Like, could you give me a number? What do you think? How many brands Transgourmet has? So we're talking about uh, more or less 20. So it was yes. quite new. <laughs> um, so before I was responsible to talk to every PO, like day by day to check their needs, the business requirements, and um, yeah, to see what we are doing next and um, fixing stuff, take care. Um, but then also Kerstin joined the team of Transgourmet and now she is like responsible to take like, er, like the leadership for the POs, collabor um, yeah. um, what you say? Uh, collecting yes, everything together. So um, this was a really good help and um, right now she is collecting for every PO so this turns from PO side to stakeholder side because right now Kerstin is my new PO on my side because the other ones are reporting to her and not to me anymore. Um, so as you can see there is 1x internet so that's more or less my person also the team behind and for you and your customer what um, Kerstin mentioned um, there's another agency also working for Transgourmet. Um, as you can see here, uh, we have Trupal CMS, the design system, shop, app and product. So these are all teams, um, teams which are we manage together. So they are all um, connecting to each other. So Trupal CMS is doing together with design system and app and shop. So they are all in relation. Um, right. Then, what I already uh, mentioned, Kerstin consolidate everything from uh, business side. So everything what she got reported to her from CMS, shop, IT and compliance, she collects. And then there is a information um, communication between her and me um, all the time. All the time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm collecting all the stuff, putting into features, and um, also we have meetings. Um, but more or less, we are putting every. I'm putting together with the team everything together that we, the project teams um, can then focus and work on their like issues and daily business. Yo, this is what I said, that our team can focus. Um, by creating focus, uh, the team can concentrate and on the important issues and also the knowledge could be um, shared. So this is very, very important in this big volume of projects and POs, stakeholders, from business side, from client side, all together. All right. I can also say something. <laughs> Thank you, Karin. 
So yeah, let's let's talk about our uh, workflow. And as we mentioned before, we had a, one of the huge biggest challenges we both faced this year was a switch from uh, one tool to, uh, to the other. We had a really nice workflow in GitLab and then the client, like our, our side, uh, had the idea to combine all the teams in one tool so we can work easily together. And that's actually true. It's a good thing. But for us, it was like one of the hardest, really hardest uh, things to adapt to a tool which we never worked before and also create a new workflow that fits us actually. And one or two tiers were falling actually in this process, which uh, yeah, I'm happy that we actually managed to have now in Azure DevOps a board, which all the sections with a product for the product owners or stakeholders, which I'm managing. So this is like my playground, this uh, board. I'm yeah, receiving all the requests from all the stakeholders, sorting them in, discussing with them, sending them into refinements, getting them back, letting them approve before it goes into the sprint. And yeah, this is most my, basically my my work. Hmm? Ah, yeah, this was happening actually before on one side, still in GitLab, but now we're like sharing everything. Um, so this is like. The feature board is like my my responsibility, and the sprint board is Karin's. So, yeah. So we have like feature boards, feature boards. We have also templates that the PO or stakeholders can provide all the information without asking again. Like, could you share a link? Could you pass this in? So I think everyone knows about this situation. Um, we create a template. Um, as Kerstin already mentioned, we have six stakeholders in the project of um, CMS here. Um, they have business requirements. They um, have maybe ideas what they want to have on the side. And also Kerstin is then collecting everything and check if there are similarities. Um, so we have also a side all, so to oversee all the business um, needs, uh, yeah, so to say. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, this is your playground. <laughs> My playground is more on the sprint uh, board. We have a four sprint uh, week cycle, um, a structured workflow, and we're having user stories in and flaws. So this is. And of course, um, with a robust workflow and collaboration, I know, or everyone knows, there are meetings, 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 meetings. meetings, meetings. <laughs> All day long. <laughs> we have dailies, we have uh, refinements, we have uh, reviews, retros, um, plannings. Um, like, this is for the whole team that they have to participate. But also, me as project manager, I have also meetings like uh, product team, team, team daily. Uh, where all the stakeholders are sitting in and talking about um, specific topics, what comes next. Um, then we have the product planning meeting, alignment meeting, and so on. So, um, And also for communication, we have not only features, we have uh, where we communicate. We have uh, Slack channels for each stakeholder and for each team where we can like share um, maybe topics which are not go good working or working quite well. Um, we have uh, the feature communication as said and also emails. And also we internally communicate with teams. It's always like a, a struggle <laughs> to also get into teams calls, right? We have that a lot that Karin writes me like, it's taking too long, <laughs> why I can't go in? So. This is like uh, in between, so I'm, I'm actually happy with Slack. So for me, we could do it just with Slack. And then, yeah, I want to talk about the topic also about the stakeholder alignment and something that we actually developed almost a year ago. Um, we came up with the regular table for all stakeholders. In German, it's called Stammtisch. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, it's actually I hosting. I'm hosting it once a month regularly in the last week of the sprint so we can still discuss open topics or something that is very crucial 
Um, this meeting is also there to align with everyone in the team that has ideas or requests. I'm, I'm seeing all of their requests before in the planning weeks we have. And here we discuss, does it make sense for your group or does it make sense also for yours? So I'm collecting the ideas and also their wishes and present them. This can we do as a team and it, it goes easier through the development if we actually send stuff like these requirements or this new feature or a new paragraph as a team and when it's not only one single thing. And this meeting is there to, yeah, to, to align with everyone. And I think since I'm doing this, everyone is happy and doesn't feel left out from the client side because for, before it was very much someone talked here, someone talked there and no one was really yeah, happy with this process. So I'm really proud of this that is actually working very well. And of course, everyone has their, their um, bad points here and there, so they can also complain about the agency <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> which I'm also discussing then later with Karin, of course. <laughs> but yeah, this is the appointment where they can also like, yeah, like why is this bug appearing again or usually stuff like this. <laughs> and then the next topic we have on our agenda is a little bit about quality assurance. And uh, this is a little bit of a mixture because uh, both our teams are working together. So it starts by when a developer is uh, developing its task, is testing it, then reviewed by another developer and finally checked uh, from the project manager before it goes to client side, like to us. And on our side, we have a testing team, which is actually doing the same, testing the user stories or bugs or whatever that do, does reports and also when everything is approved um, creating a review note for the next review meetings so everything is already there as we need a single point of truth for all our stakeholders that they know okay I can look, look into this page and I know okay exactly this will be deployed for my project on this day this is very very much uh, helpful that we we came up with this process and uh, yeah, the final goal for the go live to production is given by the stakeholder, by the, the owner of the website. This is not me, it's not Karin, it's like directly them that the last test before we deploy is from, from our side, from client side. Yeah, and what is really, really cool about this process that the stakeholders know exactly when we deploy, it's always Thursday so they can prepare their testing, they know when they have to, to do their job, um, that all the flaws, of course, can be checked before on test, all the dependencies that we have between shops and websites, which can be a lot sometimes, can be managed before and also managed from them. And yeah, it's also very effective to have this kind of collaboration, communication with all of them. Okay, so I think we're nearly the end, right? This was faster than expected. <laughs> So let's start with a little wrap up. So let me hand over the bouquet to you. <laughs> so just a short summary, because we talked about workflows, um, structure, focus, and so on. So we said like this is the most important topic for us. It's, it's the structure that we have in the meetings on the board, in documentation, and like also with knowledge sharing is quite um, the most important part here. Um, but also focus is very um, like important and the structure belongs to the, that everyone can focus. So when there is no structure, there can be also less focus. Um, yeah, and also the passion that uh, we were talking about that the project has so much like growing um, important potential, potential exactly um, so that every person has um, yeah which is working on the project has like new ideas like not only from client side also from our side um, and it's incredible to see how this project is growing and growing and we are now with 19 websites live and also with shop and uh, app and um, yeah so, yeah. and I also must say, me as a client, being part of this team, it doesn't really feel like it that I'm the client. For me, I'm 
it's like my team. I really like all of my team members and I really cherish their ideas and we develop really good together and every day I'm in the daily and it's, it's, it's a pleasure really. <laughs> I really wanted to say that. <laughs> And that's, that's very why, nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why um, our next slide, as you can see, all the team and yeah, we're definitely nothing without you and the Drupal community to to do this this project and and everything. And it's it's absolutely for me. It's a very nice experience to be yeah to have this 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 team team ship with you, Karin. Also the spirit to. <laughs> Um, to grow, as you can also see in the next slide, <laughs> it's uh, we're having very much fun with working, and we really think alike. And this, <laughs> they are also hard times. <laughs> it's not always good. Yes, I wanted <laughs> but, uh, to say please, that. But at least we have good times. <laughs> <Yeah>. Usually, yes. <laughs> don't don't get sick again for three weeks, Karin. This was very hard replacing you. <laughs> but I managed. Even if I'm not on one exit <laughs> side directly, I managed with the team because everyone was there. So this was really great. And yeah, now we are at the end and it's okay. time, yeah, almost. Yeah. And it's time for you. If you have any questions, please now. <laughs> Working, I don't know. Working. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, thank you so much for the presentation. It was really insightful and really interesting. I wanted to ask uh, something not that much related to the process itself. I know how challenging it can be uh, for, like, first of all, you have a big team, right? And you still have to dedicate time for people that they can uh, do self development. I don't know, like research or some courses or any, any sort of like uh, ways of getting new knowledge. How do you guys manage that? Do you dedicate like some uh, knowledge sharing sessions or some time uh, time within the entire workflow dedicated specifically for these courses? Internally? Um, it's a good question. <laughs> Sometimes I'm asking also myself how I'm managing this, but um, at least we are sa uh, said we would like to do this session together and we also uh, investigated some hours like on the side, not like uh, always in the time. Um, but yeah, I think we are coming to this um, situation that it, we that from my perspective, I have more time to investigate also in like growing also and um, go on a session, make like this topics. Yeah. yeah, also the devs. Yeah, true. Of course. Hello. Thank you for the presentation. It was really good. And I also have a question. I think it's mainly for Karin. So, as far as I understand, uh, OneX is using like GitLab for project management tool and also Transformed before, but then you changed to Azure. Internally, you are having two, 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 the two tools at the same time, or are you using completely Azure for everything? With this, like how you manage, for example, time tracking from the developers, if internally you are using another tool? No, um, me also like the team is using Azure. Um, there is also GitLab on our side, but we're not using it with this uh, project. So this is connected with our self-development tool, I guess. Uh, tracking, Diego, help me out. <laughs> yeah, time tracking. So this is connected, and everyone can track his time like on the issue directly. question is, how did you design the workflow? Oof, basically, um, I remember starting with the board 
with a feature board which has no structure, with which just rows and ideas we have how to structure. But this was, every time I looked at this board, it was killing me. It was just a huge, huge carpet of things and was not really structured. So we really needed to, to think about something. And as we grew with this, to use this tool, we figured out how to actually separate it in different lines and then sort it new. So we could actually have a structure which is like each, each website has its own row and then we could start also creating the different state a feature is in. So for example, uh, we start with feature new, then each stakeholder is taking their feature and drawing it into the PO request column. When I have the plannings with all of them, I discuss each feature with them if it makes sense or send it back or if we have to consult maybe one of the developers before. And then if this is approved, I will move everything into refinement. It will be refined so everyone and it's estimated, of course, very important, estimated, so we can work with this. And uh, yeah, after refinement, I will ping all my stakeholders to check the refined features if this is really what they actually want. When this is the case, everyone moves their features into the, into the approved column. And when everything is there and everyone did their job, I will start again and plan it for the next sprint, the sprint after or the sprint after. It also depends if another team is involved, if we have to do a design or if the shop team has to develop something. That's always like, you never know. Even when you start in one sprint, it could take like two to actually finish. So it, it's always, always a thing. So, but yeah, that we had also keep in mind to actually create a workflow which works for us. So I hope that answered more or less the question. <laughs> yes. uh, with multiple agency, is one a lead or is it just a partner, a joint partnership? How do you deal with conflicts if both are working on the same code base at the same time? So first of all, um, it's a joint partnership. So we have this uh, product um, team meeting so there are also not a product like not stakeholder how to say i mean from the agency from for union customer yeah. what i showed it's there management board or yeah, it's a mixed yeah. management board yeah, yeah exactly so they are also um, responsible uh, responsible and we're just sharing this um and how do you deal with the conflicts in both are working on the same code? Um, that's not the problem because we're not working on the same code, as I would say. And then what e-commerce? So the question is what e-commerce you use and how do you integrate it with Drupal? This is a question I would like to uh, raise in the audience <laughs> for someone who is uh, involved in the development. Ruven. <laughs> it's commerce tools, yes, but there was there's, I, I just can't say commerce tools. That's basically all. Yeah, <laughs> please. Yeah. Hi, it wasn't me, but I like the, the question. Uh, we don't talk much about uh, e-commerce in the convention. Uh, I think you use commerce tools yes. as, a, as a solution. Um, my question is, there is Drupal commerce. Why ah. do you use it? Yeah, <laughs> this is a good question. This was decided <laughs> before we both joined the project, actually. So you got us more or less on guard. But you don't have the answer, <laughs> so I understand. Someone comes to our rescue. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. I'm Ruven. Uh, I've been the solutions architect for Transcomi for the last four years. And it was indeed a big challenge, right? So Transcomi has many of those SAP hyperspec ends and ARP systems. And it was obvious that you cannot integrate each single one with each site. So we had to create this layer where we abstract all commerce processes together with commerce tools. And now we have this unified layer and we actually do this individual integration, but it's a standard interface for all of the sites. Uh, feel free to like come to the booth. We can have a deeper conversation around that if you like. OK, 
Okay, thank you very much for your help. <laughs> and then there's another question. Is more communication happening in meetings or in tickets? How do you keep documentation up to date for new product managers or developers? Oh yeah, very good question actually. And it's still a challenge we are facing. <laughs> I mean, the communication is a lot in our user stories. So we also keep it there to not uh, have Doc yeah, for the documentation, so not have things in Slack or in um, what else, emails, when I will not really be using emails, it's just me and Karin. <laughs> yeah, but um, there is a lot of documentation in the old tool and the new tool, but we still are building this documentation now in the Azure DevOps Wiki. So it's, it's work in progress now, because since we switched and I see there's a lot of need that we have proper documentation also uh, for all the content editors. That's more basically also my, my job to provide proper documentation for everyone who works with the CMS. But yeah, um, it's still work in progress. <laughs> it can get definitely better. Well, it would be boring if we have already managed everything, right? So. <laughs> Definitely, we're going to save the slides. Um, okay, the question is, do you have different features or only different design systems on the website? Yeah, we definitely have different design system, as Kerstin also uh, said, um, and we have different features, yes, more or less. I mean, when a PO or a stakeholder is requesting a new feature, um, then mostly we are also sharing this with the other uh, websites. So it's mostly everyone has the same features. Yes. That is my goal. More okay. questions? Then thank you all. <laughs> <laughs>